G'day guys, my name is Ben and welcome to the channel and today we'll be looking at my 2015 MacBook Pro which I've owned since brand new. Now if you've been on my channel already, you might actually see that I have a video on there right now that reviews all three of my MacBooks that I have right now, which is the 2015, 2016 and 2020. And that video actually goes for quite a long time, about 25 minutes or so. So I thought what I would actually do is just break that video down into three separate sections to each individual laptop and publish those out as a separate video. So this little video followed by the next two are gonna be like a three part series, just talking about my ownership experiences about those three laptops. But if you do wanna jump ahead and see what I think about the other two already, you can basically jump ahead and click up here and you'll be taken to the video that has all of the content there already. So with that said, let's talk about the 2015 MacBook Pro. So as I said, this has been my personal computer for about five years. And, and to be honest, I'm really surprised that at five years, it's still going strong as my personal computer. I generally was expecting to probably get three years out of this computer, but it just keeps going and going and going. So I'm really happy with that. To be honest, as my lifestyle's changed over the last five years, my need for a personal laptop is not as great anymore. This custom PC that you can see behind me doing most of the heavy lifting that I was pushing through that laptop, the MacBook Pro now really just serves as my email and internet machine for when I wanna chill out on the couch and things like that. It is now an occasional use computer. But before it did become that, it was my primary computer running across these two screens, getting a workout and it has done a very good job. That keyboard is timeless and it is wonderful to use and feel still today. Even the Logitech keyboard that I have behind me that I use as a hybrid keyboard for both my Mac and PC computers doesn't have the experience that that one does. And after the keyboard, obviously, the best thing about this computer is all those ports that you know and want. For my later computers, using those USB-C dongles and adapters, they never work all the time. There is always a chance something won't connect or go wrong. Even with the fancy USB-C adapters, they just don't always work when you need them to. And with the 2015 MacBook Pro, it's almost foolproof that every time you plug something in, it will work. So I guess after five years though, the computer has started to kind of run out of steam. And obviously as we've moved to kind of larger screens and faster refresh rates and 4K video and all these kind of things, this computer does struggle with a lot of that content. Basically what eventually triggered me to kind of buy that computer behind me was that my personal computer just could not handle Premiere Pro it was really going slow doing photoshopping on files from like my Sony a7R 3 And I just kind of got sick of waiting around for progress bars to finish. And these days too, just running Google Chrome with a few tabs open will send the fan into overdrive and the computer will sound like a jet engine almost with any type of use these days. But that's to be expected of a five-year-old computer, right? Like I know people with five-year-old laptops that just barely turn on. So it is a great computer, but even with all that fancy technology, like the integrated video cards and things like that in the 2015 model, they aren't really up to scratch if you're kind of going down a 4K video gaming type workflow. So this MacBook's also had all the repairs and recalls done to it. And there's two that I kind of wanted to talk about today. And one of those is the screen. So after about a year of owning this laptop, I noticed that the screen basically had a complete mirror image of my keyboard on it. Effectively, the keyboard had scratched its way into the screen. It was a bit insane, especially as a computer with one year's worth of use. And it was also being used 50% of the time as a desktop computer. I took it into Apple and Apple said, right, yep, we know there was a problem with the screens, we will replace it for you under warranty. And I got a new screen and it's actually held up perfectly good. There is basically not a mark on this screen even five years in. But my problem with the 2015 MacBook Pro, and for those of you watching, if you were actually thinking of buying one, is that recall, at least in Australia, was voluntary. You had to take your computer to Apple and tell them that you had the problem. I have friends of mine, whether they're work colleagues or friends, that have the same computer and they did not get their screen replaced. And let me tell you, it looks like today that someone with a knife and fork has scratched the living shit out of the screen and it is impossible to use, especially outside. So do yourself a favor and if you are buying one, make sure you see if the screen has been recalled and replaced. 
So the other big recall that I wanted to mention too was that one around the battery and that was about a year ago when the MacBooks were kind of on the news saying that their batteries could explode and then the air the airports and airlines banned all of the batteries and MacBooks and things like that. And I actually went to the United States last year on a holiday and had to get my laptop battery repaired quickly so I could actually take it on the flight. Because when I actually boarded my flight to America, the, the airport actually checked my MacBook and checked the documentation to see if it had been recalled. And that all went perfectly fine and smoothly, but the actual recall itself, um, the technician at Apple actually told me that that recall replaced half the components of the computer. So that recall got me a new keyboard, a new battery, and a whole heap of other new internals. And I was really hoping that that whole suite of new parts would actually bring life back into the computer, maybe fix that kind of overheating jet engine fan noise that I was mentioning earlier. Unfortunately, it did not, but I did get a fresh keyboard out of it. And most importantly, I could take the computer on the aeroplane and that was a good win. <laughs> now to talk about some of my favorite things about this computer too, without a doubt, it is just simply that there's no touch bar on this computer. There's no gimmicks. It is a simple keyboard with regular old buttons. And I'll talk about the touch bar later, but I personally am not a fan of it. And I really do appreciate like the simplicity of this computer. It's almost like it was the last computer before technology kind of took off and Apple started to take gambles on all these new and weird ideas on technology. So it doesn't have your fingerprint scanner and all those other bits and pieces. It's just a computer and it's exactly what you know and understand. And that's my favorite thing. Now the computer is a bit thicker, wider and heavier than the other computers. And if you are getting in the market for travel, you really do notice once you move on from that computer, how much heavier and large this laptop is. Compared to modern laptops, the 2015 MacBook Pro is quite a big computer. But you must admit the computer still does look good thanks to the way Apple styles their products. So yeah, so, so to sum up the 2015 MacBook Pro, this computer is a great computer for just general use now. I think if you're kind of getting into kind of the content creation space and things like that, it's probably good to keep you going. And the way that these computers in particular are holding their value at the moment, it's probably a really safe bet to buy because you could likely sell it for exactly the same price or close to if you decide to do something better. So that about wraps up the 2015 review, but if you do want to continue watching and see what I think about the 2016 MacBook Pro more in depth, that will be the next video in part two, which you should be able to see a link for at the end of this video or jump into the description and click there to carry on and see the next one. But in the meantime, thanks a lot for watching and we'll see you around. Thanks.